Hey there, everybody. Ready for another Bible drill? This time we want to drill on the subject of family. You know, the Bible says a lot about family, and if you're watching this and participating in this right now, chances are pretty good that you're in a family. You have a family, and you play a role in your family. And so we want to learn from some Bible families and some Bible passages about how God uh, wants the family to operate. And let's just start with that very first family in the book of Genesis. Who is the very first family in the Bible? Who were the members of that family? All right, if you said Adam and Eve, and then their sons Cain and Abel, great. Thumbs up for you. Bonus points if you also added that they had another son named Seth, who we're not told nearly as much about, but they had another son a little bit later named Seth. Now, this was God's first family. However, they didn't function the way that God wanted a family to function. Adam and Eve had some problems in the beginning, and then Cain and Abel had some problems as well. Of course, very famously, Cain kills his brother Abel. The question that I have for you is, what did Cain say to God after he had killed his brother Abel? You know, God asked Cain, well, where's your brother? How did Cain respond? Yeah, he asked that question, am I my brother's keeper? As if to say, I'm not responsible for my brother. I don't really have to worry about him or to care about him. Well, that's not the way that we ought to act towards our brothers or our sisters or anybody else in our family. We ought to have a care and concern for them and uh, think about their welfare even, even above our own. Let's move a little further in the Old Testament because we read about that next big family, and that would be uh, the family of Noah. They got to board the ark, and since they believed God, they were saved from the flood. Uh, my question is, first of all, how many people in Noah's family were saved during the flood? Let's just answer that one first. Yeah, if you counted them there, there's eight of them. Now here's the next question. Who are all these people? Can you name those people? Who's the first one there? Well, that one's Noah. Next would be Noah's wife. We don't know her name, so we'll just call her Mrs. Noah. Next would be his son, Shem. And then the son, Ham. And then the third son, Japheth. And then who are these last three? Well, that would be Shem's wife, Ham's wife, and Japheth's wife. That's the eight people who saved, were saved from the flood, and God then uh, used them after the flood to begin the process of repopulating the earth. Now, the remainder of the book of Genesis follows these families uh, that are all part of one family, uh, these patriarchs. We read about Isaac and Joseph and Abraham and Jacob. Um, can you put these in order? Let's put them in the correct order that they need to be. Who would be... Who would be the oldest? Who is the first of those? That's right. That would be Abraham. And Abraham's son was who? All right. Abraham fathered Isaac. And Isaac was the father of who? Jacob. That's right. And then Jacob would be the father of, of Joseph. Now, Joseph was not the only son of Jacob. In fact, Jacob had several sons. And let's talk about those. Can you name the 12 sons of Jacob who end up becoming the 12 tribes of Israel? Let's start from the oldest all the way down to the youngest. And I'll give you a hint with the first letter of each of their names. The first one starts with an R. That's who? That's Reuben. The next is with an S. Simeon. The next would be with an L. Levi, the next oldest, starts with a J. Judah, and then the fifth, starts with a D. Dan, next starts with an N. Naphtali, that's a really strange name. How about number seven? What's his name? Starts with a G. Gad, the eighth, starts with an A. Asher, that's right. I know an Asher. I know a Levi. How about number nine? Starts with an I. 
Yeah, I can't say that I know any Issachars, but there was an Issachar in the Bible. How about number 10? Starts with a Z. Zebulun. 11 is that son that we just noticed. That's J. Joseph. There we go. And then the youngest was Benjamin. There we go. And just kind of as a bonus, there was also a daughter in that family. Do you remember her name? Her name was Dinah. And she would have kind of... Uh, been at a disadvantage with all of these, all of these boys in the family. Now, uh, Joseph was treated very specially by his father, and his father gave him something that the rest of his brothers did not get. What was that that his father gave him? That's right. He gave him that coat of many colors, this colorful, beautiful coat. And how do you think that made his brothers feel? Yeah, it made them feel very, very jealous and made them very angry with their brother Joseph. And that led to a terrible series of bad decisions on their part and uh, caused a lot of conflict within that family. If you move ahead a little bit in the history of the Israelite people, the Israelites, when they were given the Ten Commandments, there was one of those commandments that was specific to children. So out of all of the Ten Commandments, which one of those was specifically for children? There we go. Honor your father and mother. That was so important to show honor to moms and dads and the position that they hold in trying to raise children and to teach them what's right. We'll come back to that one in just a little bit. When we come to the New Testament, we read about some episodes with families. We read specifically about a man by the name of Jairus who came to Jesus because he was very concerned about a specific member of his family who was very, very sick. Who did Jairus come to Jesus and ask about and ask if he could could help and, and to heal? That's right, his daughter. Uh, She was very, very sick, and in fact, by the time that they got back to the house, she had already died. But Jesus raised her and brought her back to a regular state of health so that that family could be back together once again. What about a little bit later in Jesus' life, when he was on the cross? Jesus was still thinking about his, his earthly, physical family, and he was thinking specifically about one person in particular in his family. When he was on the cross, who did Jesus tell one of his apostles to please take care of? Yeah, his mother Mary. And we believe that the apostle that he was talking to was the apostle John. And he told John to take care of Mary because Jesus was going to die and Jesus very soon was not going to be on the earth anymore. And so he wanted his mother to be taken care of um, by John. Let's think a little bit about uh, another character that we read about later in the New Testament. Who was the young man in the New Testament who we are told was taught the Bible and was taught the truth by his mom and by his grandma? In fact, he has two books in the New Testament that are named after him. Who was this young man? That's right, it's Timothy. First and second Timothy are those books, but it was the influence of his mother and his grandmother that was so important in teaching him about God and passing on faith to him so that Timothy could later on become a preacher of the gospel himself. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 4, uh, Paul says some things about, about parents and children. And in that passage, he says that when our parents get old, and are not able to take care of themselves anymore, who's supposed to take care of them when that time comes? Yep, we are. It's our responsibility. We are to take care of our moms and our dads. That's our way of of returning back to them. They take care of us when we're young, and when they get old and they're weak, we're going to help take care of them. Now let's keep thinking about the family because the Bible also talks about marriage and about husbands and wives. And in Ephesians 5, the Bible says that husbands are to love their wives in the same way that Christ loved what? Yeah, 
That's right. The same way that Christ loved the church. That's a picture of of our local church family from several years ago. Uh, The Lord loved His church so much that He was willing to sacrifice for her. And if the day comes that you grow up and you find someone that you're wanting to marry, young men, then you're going to need to love them and sacrifice and give up for them in the same way that Jesus sacrificed for the church. In Ephesians 5, and in fact in lots of other places, the Bible says some things about how long husbands and wives need to be married for. So how long does God want husbands and wives to be married? Mm -hmm. He wants them to be married for life. That's the way that God designed it in the beginning. Let's get married and let's be serious about that and we're going to be married all the days of our life until we're no longer here upon this earth. That brings us here to this memory verse that's important as we think about the family and especially as kids. It's Ephesians 6 verse 1. If ever there's a verse that's worth you memorizing, this one is it. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And it is that idea that Paul in the very next verse goes on to say, Honor your father and your mother once again, so that it will be well with you and you live long on the earth. But let's just focus on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, you do it on your own. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You need to not only memorize that, but you need to do that. That's God's command for you because that's your role in the family. And I'm glad that we got to talk about some things from the Bible about the family. Till next time, thanks.